agenda number eight, Commission member Angley is in fourth semester of LCD file R089-13, reciprocal Lake Mead and Lake Mojave in Colorado fishing license. October. For the record, uh, Comptroller Chief of Fisheries, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, before you is CGR 436. Uh, this is related to, again, fishing of reciprocal waters of the Colorado River, which are Lake Mead, Lake Mojave, and the Colorado River below Davis Dam. Uh, this regulation updates and modifies the language in NAC 502.285 to correspond with uh, the Memorandum of Understanding, which was approved uh, by the Commission in August with the Arizona Game and Fish Commission, and sets the <coughs> age for the minimum age for a fishing license on those reciprocal waters at 12, uh, which corresponds to the required age in Nevada and mostly in the rest of Nevada. It was formerly 14 because that was Arizona's requirement. They have since gone to a minimum age of 10. So the agreement sets that age, minimum age requirement at the highest minimum age of either state. And that's what this does. Any questions? Seeing none, uh, any public comment on agenda item number eight? Seeing none, I'll bring the information to any others. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number nine. Uh, Commission General Regulation 437 LCD file. R9813, uh, creating a new mic. My cops. And Maureen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maureen Hellinger for Nevada Department of Wildlife License Office. I got the coin toss on this one between Mike and I, so please back up on the biology. Um, before you have CGR 437R1913, as part of the September commission meeting, the department staff biologist Mike Cox presented several reports, and one of which was a report on regarding the establishment of new hunts with the success of bighorn sheep transplant program and the growing populations of bighorn sheep in the state. The department is now recommending new hunts as an additional management tool for population management. Establishment of U-Hunts will assist the department in addressing concerns related to disease events and water and resource impacts and management of the state's growing populations. CGR 437R90 uh, introduces amendments to permanent regulation by providing clarification of RAMs and sealing of forms in the demerit program, establishing the species gender and eligibility waiting periods for use, and clarification of species gender in the sheep checkout, and lastly, the definition of a U which we borrowed that definition from Colorado when we put this together. So as a workshop, I'll go through the sections um, real quickly. Section 1, subsection 1 on page 7 adds the clarification of gender uh, for the um, seal and brand uh, in the demerit program, uh, restricting that to a RAM. Section 2, subsection 1 on page 15 is also clarification on the gender. Uh, subsection 1 regarding the 10-year sheep eligibility waiting period is being amended to clarify that that's the waiting period for rams. And then in section 2, subsection 2 is new language to add the eligibility waiting period for the new Yukon if it's approved and to include the subspecies of sheep. The format's based off of the RAM language above in that, um, in that, that layout. And then the department recommends a two-year waiting period regardless of harvest. And then section two, subsection three is language regarding the sealing of bighorn sheep farms. And the first amendment is, a, is gender is added to clarify that hunters with a sheep tag, regardless of the gender of sheep, will still present the skull and horns for inspection. But in the next sentence, the words for RAM are added to clarify that it's only the ram horns that will receive the seal and brown or pin or brown. And then lastly, uh, of a ram is added to clarify that it is the possession of ram horns without a seal or brown that's unlawful. And then the last amendment is uh, section 2, subsection 4. It's all new language and it's the definition of a U. So with that workshop, I'll turn it back to the commission. Any questions from the commission? Okay, seeing none, any public comment? 
Mr. Turner, please. Our county board was adamantly opposed to having a youth hunt. Youth, a youth hunt. Uh, I wasn't here in September meeting, so I don't know the biology, but we thought there was a large possibility that a one-year-old ram is pretty difficult to tell from a youth. Uh, if you can, we'll see if you can stick around long enough to see him take a leak, him or her. Uh, the rest of the regulation didn't have any problems, just, just a youth hunt. Any other comments? Come on up, Mark. For the record, Glenn Bunch, Mineral County. This was quite a, a lengthy topic in our meeting last night. And uh, there's an awful lot of vagueness in this. For instance, lastly, of a ram is included to clarify the possession of ram horns without a seal or brand is unlawful. It doesn't separate out dead heads. If you pick up a set of horns out there, you don't go have them sealed. They're illegal to have. Um, this was brought to our attention. I said no, they relaxed that several years ago. This is not in the language that it says that you can pick up a dead head or that it needs to be brought in. <coughs> and also, there's lots of area in Mineral County, the Wasics, the Gillis Range, that is room to be moving the ewes into rather than to shoot. It was quite a lengthy process that went on. There's been new guzzlers installed in different parts of the hills in Mineral County and making habitat for sheep. There'll be plenty of room to be moving these before we start shooting. So it was quite a lengthy process. Uh, there's a, as I brought up before, there's a newly formed Mineral County Sportsman's Group. They represent approximately 100 of the Mineral County Sportsmen, and they were pretty adamant about the no hunting of the ewes. But these two items were the ones that was really brought up, was the dead heads and uh, no hunting of ewes. We're against it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bonamici, before we move on to the Glenn brought up the point about deadheads. We discussed this quite a bit a few years ago. And the way the law is read now, we really legally can't have a sheep deadhead. It's just you haven't been enforcing that part of the law. From what I remember, that was when Clint Benton was still on the commission. We had these discussions. For the record, Rob Bonamici, Chief Game Warden. Yeah, pursuant to NRS, uh, it is unlawful to possess any big game animal or part thereof without. Uh, tag attached is prima facie evidence that the animal is illegally killed. So what that means is that if you have uh, antlers or technically, you know, as I stated before years ago, you know, technically a deer hair is part of an animal and you, you need a tag. Obviously we don't enforce it that way or interpret it that way. Uh, <clears throat> we use it for the purpose for which it was intended, and that is to apprehend poachers and prevent poaching. So with regards to the deadhead issue, uh, we don't seal the bighorn sheep pickup heads. Uh, that is also a couple reasons. One is uh, there are you know occasions when people do go out, poach a bighorn sheep, rock pile the head, come back and say, look what I found. So we don't want to legitimize the poached head. And I'm not trying to give the impression that goes on on a daily basis by any means. It doesn't, but it does happen occasionally. The other issue is with other uh, fishing game agencies throughout the West and Canada, they prefer we didn't seal pickup heads as well because they didn't want poach uh, opportunity to uh, legitimized poached uh, big orange sheep. So that's the reason behind it. What we do ask from uh, the public, the hunters that run across uh, dead heads, is if they would notify us so we can do the best to investigate it and determine if it was poached or not. If we can't determine it was poached, they're, they're welcome to keep it. Uh, 
but if we determine it was poached, uh, then obviously we're going to seize it for evidence and hang on to it and try and apprehend the poacher, obviously. And it also gives us an idea, too, if we have a lot of poachings, reports of poachings in a certain area, and we find people picking up deadheads when we find the same individual picking up the same deadhead, be it deer, elk, sheep, what have you. Uh, it just gives us something to look at. So that's kind of where where we left it. Okay. That's, that was my recollection, Mr. Lewis. The record, Paul Dixon, Clark County. Uh, I got asked for breakfast this morning who the dissenting vote was at the, in Clark County of not wanting to do that. That was me. And, and I think, from my perspective, uh, I think that we still have, as mentioned earlier, a lot of real estate that we could tramp and transplant. I realize that that's a costly way. I realize it would be nice to have another management tool. But I think that uh, our desert big board sheep population is very frail. And if, uh, and if the river mountain die off hasn't taught us that it's that, and uh, you know, the, when we lost the Rocky Mountains here a few years ago, we have a very frail system. And we should be figuring out ways to try to preserve that system and keep its population in control without a human is, is my personal opinion just for that. And then that's, I thought I'd give that, even though the Clark County Cap voted for one to say have a new hunt. And I think one of the major reasons that was given by some people is they really felt that uh, it would be nice for some people to have that trophy to add to their trophy room. Uh, you know, it's, it's part of an additional trophy in their room. If you have a ram or a full mount of a couple of things, it'd be nice to have it. You would have kind of like a Cabela's type of uh, of an outlet was one of the reasons given in our the cab the other night. And the last thing is, is that I'm glad we had the deadhead discussion because with the die off in the, in the river mountains, there's going to be potentially a lot of deadheads that are available in southern Nevada here and are going to be found just because we've had hundreds of, of animals pass away in that region. So I'm not sure how that's going to get worked well, but I would imagine you're going to have a lot of people turning on things to me. Good thanks. I think, I think anytime you're around Lake Mead, and it's on a park, you cannot pick up that dead head. That is property of the federal government at that point. You don't pick up dead heads on the park service land. Brad Johnson, Wyoming County Cab. We uh, adopted a motion to support the uh, creation of a U-Hub, but it was with a caveat if it's, if it's needed. And the public comment was other management tools need to be exhausted uh, before we established the U Hunt as, as others have suggested. Um, speaking now, not as the CAD chairman, but just as me, I, I would reiterate that. I would like to see just all trap and transplant options and every other option established uh, before uh, a U Hunt is established. And there was comment in our CAD as well that it makes a nice trophy. and. Uh, I like trophies. I have a trophy room under construction right now. But I absolutely oppose the creation of any hunt because a you might make a nice mount next to a ram. Uh, that's my personal statement. That's not from the Lyon County Cap. Uh, I like to have trophies in my house, uh, but that should in no way ever be the reason to establish a hunt in this state or, or anywhere else, in my opinion. Thank you. Up. For the record, Miles Humphreys Jr. speaking on behalf of Washington County Cap. Um, at our meeting, we, uh, we felt it was absolutely not necessary. Um, there was talk about if, for one specific reason, if there was a suspicion of disease and whatnot, but we felt it wasn't necessary to have that tool available and it's it would be a better a much better deal to trap and transplant just for the sake of there is a lot of real estate and there's a lot of better ways of uh, managing and a lot of the public they they also agree uh, not to have that um that you hunt to pass as well and on the deadheads um I brought up uh, a comment about there's a lot of people out there that don't even know that picking up their heads are legal um, and whatnot. And I, I've, I've had people in the past ask me, well, I, I picked up a dead head and showed it to Fish and Game and it wasn't returned. And, you know, for the reasons being the way that the law is 
demonstrated, but I think there needs to be possibly some type of language to say, to let people know that if they do pick it up, they should take it to and get it inspected. And if they do, Fish and Game should at least give some kind of, hey, we'll, we'll either give it back to you within 30 days of investigation or not, or give something. And, and I think if people, the general public, know that what's going to go on with the deadhead, they'd be more apt to do the right thing and help out Fish and Game as far as possibly seeing if it was a, a man caused um, kill or whatnot. So, but back to the use, um, where the Washington County Child was totally against it. So, thank you. Who else? Yeah, I'm sorry. For the record, Tom Barnes, Chairman of Elko County Cap. At our meeting, we voted to support it. Um, we listed some of the biologists and decided that it would be a good tool to put in toolbox if, if they needed it to, uh, to help manage a population. Also during that discussion, there was a veterinarian that was present, and uh, he mentioned we were talking about the die-off of some of the sheep, and uh, he said there apparently has been some research they've been uh, looking at as far as genetic diversification in some of the sheep populations that are kind of isolated, there's no genetic diversification and they're finding that uh, uh, suppresses the immune system in the sheep and that maybe we should look at getting some more genetic diversification in these uh, small bunches of sheep to uh, possibly help their uh, immune system. Thank you. Mr. Moldy. Hi, Mr. Chairman, Don Moldy, I'm speaking for myself. Uh, let me support the sportsman's opposition to you hunting, the, the, those who have spoken to that. Uh, generally, I don't like the idea of killing females either, and it seems like it's, rather than a, a management strategy of, of proactive nature, it seems like killing females may represent a failure of the management strategy. <clears throat> and therefore, uh, I'm concerned about it, and I would invite some reciprocity from the sportsman at our bear committee when I talk about not killing older female bears. Seems to have an analogy. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? For the record, Tom Castanelli with Humboldt County. We also voted to uh, go along with the U Hunt. And we did have some concerns, um, similar to the, most of the U Hunt today, of this be a last, last ditch effort, you know, if we need the U Hunt. Talking at lunch today, there was some, you know, we we're talking about three separate species of sheep, too, and we got to look at California that's completely different than deserts and the Rockies. I mean, the, uh, California herds are pretty confined, and if we have no place to transplant or go with those sheep, we do not want to have these die-offs. Uh, as to Dr. Moldy's, suggestion, you know, as a bayer, I, I feel it's just the opposite. We're getting these herds to where they're overpopulated. Um, that's when the, the new hunt should come into effect. So I think it's a, a positive. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up, Corey. For the record, like that, Corey Lattle, Lincoln Cab. We did support it. Um, we supported it as a tool in the toolbox, much like some of the other cabs did. You know, we realize it's going to be a last resort um, in most cases, but we also realize it is a positive. It's a good problem to have if we can avoid some of the other negatives that may come by not having a hub. So we support it. Anybody else? Mr. Keller. My, for the record, my name is Steve Calvers, and I'm up here to state my opposition to the U-Hunt. I feel that uh, just like the rest of the animals in the state of Nevada, they have a tough time of surviving, but they have the additional issue of uh, catching pneumonia, which can wipe out a whole herd, just like that. And uh, I think we need these ewes to be able to maybe replenish those herds that we've lost. And, uh, 
That's all I have to say about it. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Now Belvin. Mel Bell in Washoe County. Um, I am on the same uh, wavelength as um, I brought it up to Tommy Casanelli. I think we have a completely different situation with desert sheep views and California sheep views and a hell of a lot difference with uh, Rocky Mountain. Um, on the California side, I don't believe we're there yet, but we're going to get there pretty quick. Um, I. I support a U hunt. And I said this before, before this body, I'm going to be the happiest guy in the world when I finally say, yeah, let's have a U hunt. I've, I've devoted a lot of my life to it. Um, the things that scare me about it are this. <clears throat> they say we're going to use it as a last resort. And if we listen to the people in the department, we're already there. We've already been told. They're on record saying that we just don't have any place to put these sheep. We just built uh, four guzzlers in units 206 and 208. We have a population of under 200. As a matter of fact, probably 150. And uh, I'm told that, that unit can take over a thousand animals between those two units. I've also been told that we should have moved 500 sheep this year, but we've only had room for 100 of them. When we look at units like 182 and 183, hey, we don't know a sheep guy. We know what goes on there. We know how many animals they can have. And we know what we got. When we bring 184 in there, the Desicoya, we've got an area that is not doing real well. And uh, matter of fact, we take the ram tags out of there. We know our ewes are not what they're doing. I guess we've got to go find out what's going on there. But I firmly believe that we do have places to put these, these ewes. Again, California is uh, a, a, a different situation. Um, so I'm speaking mainly with, uh, with the desert. Um, I, I would rather hear that, you know what, we're going to completely fill up the mountains with these before we kill one of them. But I'm, I'm hearing just about the opposite when I'm told that we've ran out of places to put these. We haven't ran out of places. There's plenty of places to put them. Again, I am for the new hunt, but I'm not for it this time. And I think we have plenty of places to put sheep. Thank you. Who's next? Mr. Smith? Come on in. And Mr. Smith and Mr. Johnson. For the record, Henry Pinka, President of the Bad Outfitters and Guys Association. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we are in support of the u as long as um, transporting them is not an option. Thank you. For the record, Greg Smith representing MBU. Um, we did develop a position statement on u line we saw it coming. I'm just going to read it into the record if that's okay. Consistent with MBU's mission to protect and enhance the better wildlife resources, it's our goal to re-establish big horn sheep populations in every viable area of suitable habitat. The best science available at the time is to be utilized, and that's probably key for us. Um, capture and release within Nevada or for export to augment out-of-state herds is preferable to the killing needs. So long as suitable habitat's available, and risk factors can clearly be sufficiently low by wildlife professionals. If best science developed by endowed professionals concludes that the killing of ewes is recommended, for example, disease contaminated sheep that exist in high densities, MBU will support that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Well, Larry Johnson, uh, MBU and <clears throat> Coalition for Nevada's Wildlife. Um, I think that, line, that policy statement you know, pretty well sums it up. Um, I wrote it, so it's, it's obviously good. <laughs> um, I don't believe we necessarily need new hunts um, at this time. 
but I think it's imperative that we have that available. Um, piece in point I would have from Southern Nevada is, is if uh, during this die off and in, in, uh, that we had in the rivers and the Eldorados and the Spring Mountains, if if that had slopped over into the muddy mountains, even if we didn't have a die off, even if the pathogens were detected in high concentrations, we would not feel comfortable in spreading those, capturing those sheep and putting them elsewhere, giving them to Utah like we did, or or bringing them up north. Um, luckily, um, I think everything tested clean and, and those transplants uh, occurred. But I think it's also imperative that the biologists have that tool available to them. Okay. So I support this, but I support it kind of as a last resort. And I think we've got a lot of places we can put sheep at this present time. Um, the other thing I'd like to um, address is the NRS that says it's illegal to possess <clears throat> parts thereof of, of um, the animals. Um, what is the difference? At that point, I would interpret that that it outlaws um, shed hunting, um, that you can possess an, an antler from an elk or a mule deer. <clears throat> the only difference with the big horn sheep is the horns are attached. Um, I am theoretically illegal as hell because I got a whole bunch of these at home each each time I've called the department. Um, and they have declined to, to plug. I've also picked up in the last probably 18 months two recent lion kills that I have taken in the department. They've given a certificate and then the lion kill is pretty obvious when you got tooth marks across the across the nose that crush the crush the skull um, that we had um, that I then had cleaned up and, and uh, given to uh, a couple of researchers so far. I'd like to see the NRS cleaned up. And if that takes legislative action, um, I'm, uh, I'm certainly willing to embark upon that because uh, I am not comfortable with anything being done at someone's personal discretion. I think there needs to be a process. Um, and, and, and yes, um, I think the department in, in general and enforcement has always treated me extremely fairly in these, in these cases. But I, I hear horror stories uh, where people haven't gotten their heads back, and this is two years ago. In fact, people from the East Humboldt's uh, that picked up monster hits uh, that anybody would give the right teeth for never got their heads back. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, now I'm bringing back to me. Any questions? Director Watson. I don't have a question, but I guess uh, I'd just like to say a few things about the state's position and where we are with, with big horn sheep management. And, you know, listening to a lot of the comments, I, mean, I can't help but <clears throat> take offense to, to some of them. I mean, Nevada has 11,500 big horn sheep, second only to Alaska. Um, the next closest state has 4,000 fewer bighorn sheep, and we didn't we didn't get to that point in restoring the state's animal because we were taking the easy road way out with management uh, because we wanted to generate revenues through killing females, or because we wanted to create opportunity for people to put trophies, uh, you know, a different gender in their trophy room. This is 100% about a management option uh, to address a scenario where you may have a population density. Uh, in an area that has documented uh, pathogen uh, problems where you can't send those sheep out of state and you don't want to spread them around within the state. So it's it's difficult to, to, to hear some of the, I guess, assumptions that we're trying to uh, maybe take the easy way out. And we didn't, we didn't get here because our sportsmen supporters uh, wouldn't have allowed it uh, either. So I, I appreciate those who who recognize what the department's done. 
and also recognize it as a, as a last ditch opportunity and by no means uh, would we recommend this as the easy way out. But we have some situations with pathogens and population densities, uh, relationship between the number of animals in an area and the, the habitat available to them uh, is also an issue. So there may be plenty of places where we could put sheep, but in some instances we don't have healthy sheep that we can put in those areas. So it's, it's just a tool and uh, not an easy way out. Thanks. Thank you. And as a follow-up to that, it's, we're becoming a victim of our own success. Uh, I sat on the MBU board just like a couple of people just spoke years ago. And if you would ask me if we would ever have a new hunt, I would told you, no way. It's not going to happen. We'll keep transplanting. And, uh, you know, there is room out there, but all the time, places we can put them, we don't have the clearance to put them, or we don't have healthy sheep to put there. There's stuff that comes up, and, and uh, we're not saying we're going to have a U-hunt. We're putting it in the toolbox, and I fully believe in our process of the county advisory boards and the commission process that we're not going to just allow a willy-nilly U-hunt to fill somebody's trophy room. If, it, if a U-hunt is proposed, every county is going to have an opportunity to speak on it, and the commission is going to have to vote on it. And it's not going to be a department decision, it's going to be a public decision, I believe in our process. So it's just a tool in the toolbox. Anybody else? Okay. We'll move on to agenda number 10, Commission General Regulation 438, LCB file R091-13, bonus plan program. Uh, Maureen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maureen Hellinger for Nevada Department of Wildlife. Um, the background on this one, the department has identified several game management strategies as possible tools for addressing herd management objectives. Currently, an applicant cannot submit two applications for the same species in the same job. Several of the strategies that are being presented at this commission meeting rely on the ability for hunters to be able to submit more than one application for a species in the same draw. The CGR men's permit permanent regulation to provide the department the ability to establish application eligibility at annual regulation level, CR level. Additionally, the exclusion of depredation and management hunts from the bonus point program, and then the premise, with that premise being that the applicant with a high number of points is, less, is more likely to trophy hunt once they draw a tag, so removing it from the bonus points, they won't be earning points. Um, lastly, the regulation also addresses the bonus point category for U hunts if the hunt is established by the commission. So with that said, um, section one, subsection two, LCB identified some housekeeping language to clarify subspecies and gender uh, as we go forward through this regulation. Uh, it's because we're adding the U's. Um, and additionally, we are actually had multiple genders out there already, so it's really a housekeeping thing that they determined. Um, NAC, uh, sub Section 2, subsection 1, NEC 5024179 addresses the application eligibility. This is the one that um, will allow more flexibility at the CR level for our application process when it comes to being able to apply um, for multiple applications per species. So by adding, unless authorized by the commission at the end of subsection 1, it provides that flexibility. Section 3, subsection 1A2, NAC 5024187 addresses the award of bonus points. Um, one of the strategies is um, to remove uh, depredation hunt tags from the bonus point program. So this, that removal of that language would address that strategy um, that will be discussed. Section 3, subsection 5, this is new language to specifically address the management strategy from the uh, the department to not have applicants earn bonus points on the depredation hunts. This also has language to include management hunts as a hunt that would not earn bonus points also. Um, in the form of that management hunt is the antlerless elk management hunt being presented as one of the strategies, that DELP option in the elk strategies that's going to be presented tomorrow. So in going forward, depending on how you decide whether on your strategies, if you're going to keep the depredation hunt in the bonus point program or not, we've got to look at this language when we move on to the regulations tomorrow. Uh, section 3, subsection 6, this is new language presenting the definition of a management hunt. I'd also like to point out 
that we had some edits uh, with, with the language that came back from LCB in that section. Um, we wanted to make the a little clarification by removing to achieve particular objective objectives out of there that was um, not language that we really particularly liked, and then add within A, and then grammatic correct to read re grammatically correct. We need to remove the word for so that that section reads as as used in this section. Management hunt means a hunt established to seek the harvest of additional wildlife within a population. So it reads a little the way the department would like to see it. So section four, subsection one, NAC 502.418 is a section on bonus point categories, and there's some housekeeping by LCB by adding the subspecies and gender language there also. And then section four, subsection 1K, is the new language to add for the big home sheep ewe hunt as a bonus point category to include all subspecies, depending on how you go forward with the ewe hunt. Um, we would need to look at this section if you decide not to approve the ewe hunt by removing this language tomorrow. Um, and then lastly, the sec section four, subsection two, deletion of the term depredation uh, is provided and promoting bonus points there also. With that, I'll turn it back to the commission. Any questions? Commissioner Drew? Yeah, just a uh, personal statement. I don't really have a question and a suggestion maybe for tomorrow, but I know there's been a lot of discussion with the depredation hunts um, in terms of the bonus point program, so it might make sense to look at when we approve the agenda tomorrow to move that discussion up before the workshops, potentially. This is an idea, um, so we can get that discussion out as part of our health discussion. And then, at, I mean, at this point, I'm not real supportive of removing the depredation hunts from the bonus point program. Um, I don't think it's going to change the kind of behavior. That's just my personal take on it. We've got a lot of points to invest in. A lot of hunters who miss a lot of uh, effort and time <clears throat> building those points to try and get a tag for whatever there is to be used. So um, that's just something that I'll put on the record today since it is a little shot. Anybody else? Seeing none, public comment. Brad Johnson for the uh, Lyon County Cab. We had some discussion on this item. Uh, we support the concept of being able to apply for both the depredation hunt and uh, another hunt for the same species as I understand the first part of this uh, proposal. With respect to removing the depredation hunt from the bonus point system, we were opposed to that. We just didn't see how it results in the desired effect. Uh, and the way I guess I see that is if there is no bonus point system and I'm on a, uh, on a hunt, then next year I have the exact same chance of drawing that tag as I did this year. So I'm not out on the hunt thinking, well, I have no chance next year because I don't have a bonus point. I have the same chance year after year, and I think that that build up of bonus points, then once I do draw, motivates me more to get out in the field and, and spend more time and to, to do the things that you need to do. And I think that was what the comments we got from the public was the same that removing the bonus point system was not going to have the desired effect. On top of that, it was, shouldn't those people who applied year after year and been unsuccessful have a better chance to know the first time applicant for that depredation hunt if that's what they decide to apply for? And in this case, we believe that should occur and the bonus point system uh, uh, should be uh, applied to, uh, to the depredation hunts. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, Publix and Clark Talk. Uh, we discussed this in the end, I'll discuss it with us. I think the goal of a depredation hunt is to remove animals. It isn't to try to get people to, to apply. It's to get people to apply to have them remove things. You don't want them getting a tag and waiting to find the trophy animal. It's to get them to apply and harvest because you have a problem. And for that reason, you really want people to apply. You might have to skip. There are some people who will depredation hunt every year, given the opportunity, because they're meat hunters. And for that reason, um, we believe that the depredation part of this is probably something that should have bonus points. But we didn't have that in our motion, exactly, Karen. We didn't have that discussion. And maybe you can clarify that comes back up to the board. But my, my memory was, is 
the depredation hunters, and, and we tended, I would, I would say as a board, we all tended to agree a depredation hunter is supposed to be there. We just never paid a motion to vote about it. So I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Come on out, Mike. Mike Turner, C. from Douglas. There were a lot of different strategies. In fact, I think there were four even strategies. Four. But uh, you had a draw for picking animals now for about 20, 30 years. I believe was driving this is when they came up with the health management plan. I don't see Larry here anymore. Um, they agreed with the cabinet to keep health numbers under a certain number. And not being able to achieve, achieve that. In fact, health numbers are just exploding in the health of um, I don't think we took a position on the bonus point for the depredation hunts, but whether you have an automatic cow elk tag along with a deer tag, or whether you have a single up both at the same time, or a cow in it and a, and a bull, why do you like to do that? In Colorado, it's just an over the, if you want to eliminate 500 cows, have an over the counter purchase of a cow tag. First come, first serve. No bonus points, no anything. That was the gist of all of the strategies was to, uh, if you're going to try to eliminate cows, then you just head them over the cow. For the record, Corey Lyle Lincoln Cab, we, we supported it, uh, taking away the bonus points. Uh, for the depredation and the management, just for the simple fact that that's what it's for. Those are the types of hunts that it's for. It puts everything on a, on, a, on an even keel. Uh, nobody's trying to rack up bonus points for a specific depredation hunt. Um, it, it specifically occurred at a lot in our county with, with that. Uh, several years, guys were trying to rack points up on this certain depredation bull hunt to where they could go in and whack a 400 class bull. And it kind of detracted from the true meaning of that hunt. The meaning of that hunt was to try to go in on this particular farm and eliminate these bulls that were living there all summer. These guys had tried to slip in during the rut and wait till the, you know, the 400 bull walked in to start riding cows, and that's what they that's what they use their depredation tactic for. And so, you know, we know every instance there's a little bit of a, you know, there's, there's variations in every instance. But with the true meaning of depredation and a management type hunt, we just felt that everybody just plays the game the same, no bonus points on that. Thanks. Right. For the record, Miles Humphrey Sr., Washington County Cab. Um, we're, we support General Regulation 438 um, as written. With the exception of removing Section 4 of the paragraph, paragraph, paragraph A. For the record, Tom Johnson, Elliott with Humboldt County. We also supported it. We thought there was some good ideas that come out of this with, with the congestion of hunters. We always get, I got a bull tag and I'm out there, or I got a deer tag, I'm out there, and um, all I see is cow out coming. And we kind of like that idea of having the two tags given to one hunter instead of having two hunters there. You're going to cut the congestion in half almost if you go that way. And there was a lot of, I know the uh, committee did a lot of work on this, and I think we need new ideas on these depredation and these out, and these cow hunts. And I thought a lot of good come out of this committee. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Tom Barnes, Double County Cab. We also supported this because we believe that the purpose of a depredation hunt is to remove animals from an area. And like was mentioned earlier, we also had a board member that thinks uh, we should be, these tags should be sold over the counter. Anybody else? Commission 
after listening to all the words, and, I mean, my opinion at first is we want to make some hunters mad and take away the bonus points. They're going to be mad. Um, I don't think that, I think when the person brought the bull tag, he's going to go try to harvest the bull that he wants, whether he got eight bonus points or one. I've never heard a hunter say, well, that's a, that's a six point, bonus point bull, or, you know. Um, I've never heard that. Um, I don't think it will have that effect. But with everyone saying that the deprivation hunt is, it's kind of being treated as a trophy hunt, then would anyone be against making these deprivation units, you know, you can, maybe 14, similar, similar to what the duck packs are? If you want me to remove the elk, that's really similar option. Okay, anybody else? All right, now we'll move on to agenda number 11. The Commission General Regulation 431 LCD file R054-13 of the Department of Nations Species. For the record, Rob Bonamici, Chief Game Warden, uh, CTR 431 LCD file number R054-13 addresses our aquatic invasive species detail. It's basically some cleanup language. Section uh, page two, the strike out in red, number two there, uh, LCB, uh, told us that's redundant, we already have uh, definition of residency in other places. Uh, then we have a requirement for a replacement decal. Somebody loses the decal. We didn't have that before. Uh, so $5 fee uh, for a lost decal. And then on page three covers uh, invalid decals. Uh, if they're altered or trimmed, uh, we do have people, believe it or not, to go and steal decals off boats, whether they're registration or aquatic invasive species. And only one uh, aquatic invasive species decal may be displayed uh, on the vessel, just like our registration. So we're just trying to keep it consistent with our boat registration. So they don't have to memorize different sets of rules and so forth. And then uh, if a fee's not paid, the decal's invalid, they write a check or something that bounces. And for the manufacturers, we have a provision in there. Uh, they just need a decal for each permit, not for each boat. So that streamlines the process for them. So with that, if there's any questions, we'd like to answer. Any questions? Okay, we'll move on to the For the record, Gil Yonner, Carson Cab. A uh, couple of questions came up at our meeting about this. And it goes back to when the legislation was enacted. And I was up there and I asked questions to legislators about boat tubes. And we got into this discussion about vessels that hold water and don't hold water. And float tubes got a buy. They were not affected by the aquatic invasive species. They were um, in on page two, section three, we talk about inflatable vessels with an inflatable transom may be attached and blah, blah, blah. And so there's people nowadays, a lot of people using not only float tubes, but pontoon boats. And I think we need some language in here that addresses the pontoon boat issue because they're rigid, you know, and they're being, and that isn't like a float tube, which is totally inflatable. They got structure to them. Not that they hold water, but some of them, you know, you could, how far do you push the question of holding water? You've got a couple of zip bags on the top where you hold spare reels and fishing gear. They could hold water. Somebody could make an issue to that. I mean, that's exaggerating it to an extreme. But I think we'd like to see some language in this 
that directly uh, talks to pontoon boats and float tubes, rather than just somebody saying, well, as long as you've done all water or something, you don't need 